it cut off my video because I didn't have enough space. But I, I was saying, uh, we were talking about the law enforcement, which are the people responsible to for apprehending people who commit crimes. Now we have the courts, which is one of the three main components of the criminal justice system. The courts are responsible for interpreting and applying the law, so they judge you. Yeah, you know, basically, the courts decide if you are guilty or not guilty. Then we have corrections, functions to protect society from criminals through housing, monitoring, and other community-based programs. So corrections are the parole programs, probations, uh, house arrest, jails, prisons, everything that keeps criminals uh, criminals from committing more crimes and, uh, and uh, keeps them on, on constant watch. Now we have something about gender, race, and Hispanic origin in the system. This is saying that, uh, this is saying, I have to stop saying uh, all the time, but well, this explains how it's mostly Hispanic and African American males that are in prison. It says that... A uh, year in 2011, adult males were in prison at a rate of 932 per 100,000, which is more than 14 times greater than the 65 per 100,000 rate characterizing adult females during that year. Black non-Hispanic adult males were in prison at a rate of 3,023 per 100,000, which is more than six times the rate of 478 per 100,000 that characterizes white non-Hispanic adult males. During the 2011, the rate of imprisoning women differed greatly by race. Black non-Hispanic females were imprisoned at a rate of 129 per 100,000, while their white non-Hispanic counterparts were imprisoned at a rate of 51 per 100,000. Not all of the difference in imprisonment rates are based solely on variation in criminal behavior. Uh, well, so uh, that's, I read that word by word, so that's not my opinion, or that's not what I think, but that's what it says in here. Then let's see what else we have. We have another page with more information about it. Then let's see what else. We have one that says, how does the criminal justice system work? The criminal justice system is large, varied, and complex and comprises many systems and services found among governments at the local, state, and federal levels. I just forgot what I read. So, sometimes I, I, I read, but I forget. Then we have a section that says a roadmap the criminal justice system process begins when a crime becomes known to law enforcement. Okay, yeah, well. And we have a definition which is nolle prosecu. That's Latin. And it says, uh, be unwilling to pursue this is commonly used a prosecutor to willing terminate legal process before trial or before verdict. That's the statement is often continued as admission that the, that the change cannot be... Well, I, I got this scanned, so I, it's hard to read, you know, the words are cut off at the end. But I'm guessing that saying that nolle prosecute means that they drop the charges. They are not going to continue the case and... Uh, Defendant, I, I I don't know I don't know the terminology. I don't know what the person who's being accused is called, but that person can go free. Then let's 
see what we have. The criminal justice system is complex. We have another definition, which is uh, nolo contendere. And that, let's read what it says. The next step is generally an arrangement. I think that, that wants to say arrangement. At the arrangement, the charges are given. The defendant is informed of his or her rights, and the defendant enters a plea, whether it be guilty, not guilty, or nolo contendere. And here it says, accepts penalty without admitting guilt. Judges may or may not accept the plea, and the defendant may or may not be sentenced immediately. Some defendants opt for a trial by jury, while others request trial by judge. So that means that they are they accept that they will go to prison, but they do not admit guilt. So I'm guessing that's uh, that's just to make it the process faster. Instead of trying to still defend yourself, you say, "All right, yeah, I'll, I'll accept the charges." But I'm still not saying I'm guilty. Then we have another section that says um, we have a definition called indeterminate sentence. Sentence given to a defendant in the form of a range of years to be served. And the example they give is when they sentence someone to from 3 to, five, to 15 years. So in here it says, I remember this part. It says that the judge doesn't determine how much time they will spend there, but they cannot spend less than three years or more than 15. And if they get out on parole, it's through the parole board on the prisons. So they uh, they, they they don't have a, a determinate sentence, and it's other people that determine how much how long they will stay in there and of course it's it's up to the the accused to behave properly and show change so that he they let him go on parole or on probation or just free now we have a section that says crime and the importance of personal liberties victim advocates Trained professionals who support crime victims as their cases move through the criminal justice system. So, victim advocates are people who help uh, victims. Inalienable rights. Rights that are universal and not contingent on laws or beliefs specific to a particular government or culture. So, those are rights that everyone has. And those are for mostly for illegal immigrants, meaning that if you're illegal in the country, they still cannot just uh, treat you like an animal or kill you or or uh, torture you. But you still have to go through the due process of court, go through court, be be uh, uh, how do you call that? Be determined guilty or not guilty. So. It protects you those are really good judicial activism this refers to deviation from the literal meaning of the Constitution to take into account the present situation including complex societal advances I do not know what that means uh, but by I can infer from the word activism that it's a movement to help people in to make it simpler and not as complex or not as difficult to go through the process now we have the USA Patriot Act the 2000 uniting to the 2001 uniting and strengthening America by providing appropriate tools required to Excuse me. By providing appropriate tools required to intercept and obstruct terrorism act was signed into law by President George W. Bush to strengthen security measures designed
time to protect the United States from attack. So that's an act protecting us from attacks. Oh, here we have more. We have a judicial activism is said to occur when decisions are influenced by personal or political underpinnings. Balancing personal freedoms and public safety concerns can present difficult public policy ch challenges. So, oh, uh, I think what it means then is that I'm not entirely sure about that one, sorry. Oh, sorry for me, because I'm the one taking the test. Or the quiz, I should say. Then we have a section that says, what is crime? Crime, the breaking of a law for which the criminal justice system or some other governing, governing authority, authority prescribes punishment. Let's see what it says in the text. What is crime? The most commonly accepted answer is that crime is the breaking of a law for which the criminal justice system or uh, is the same definition. Let's see what it says. Let's see what it, uh, it says next. Or let's keep reading. Crimes are defined differently across geographic regions such as localities, states, and nations. Oh, then we have something as street crime. Oh, wait, before that, in here it says that uh, there are crimes uh, that minors can do, but not adults, you know, such as uh, drinking, if you're under 21, if you're in Colorado, smoking marijuana, I guess, uh, going into clubs, some states have curfews, so uh, things like that. I'm not sure if there's more, but those are the only ones I know. Then we have something called street crimes. Let's see what the definition says. Street crimes. These crimes are relatively common and serious, involving a victim and offender who come together in space and time. So, when asked to identify a crime, most people res will respond by listing offenses regularly portrayed in the media, murder, rape, robbery, or vehicle theft. But these re re this responses represent an incomplete set of crimes. These acts are commonly referred to as street crimes. Street crimes are considered those that are relatively common and serious involving a victim and offender who come together in space and time. So those are crimes that they're the involve two big two people the offender and the victim you know but uh, burglary is not in there because burglary well most people do it when when nobody's at home so it, it only involves the offender he does not interact with the victims even though there are still victims they do not actually see each other or interact Now we have something called property crimes. Property crime. Crime against property. The most common forms of property crime including burglary, property theft, aka larceny, and motor vehicle theft. That that's a I used to think that larceny was when you put a when you set someone else's house in fire or that you like setting things in fire but I guess it's property theft let's see, let's read the text the public also is quite familiar with property crime which includes motor vehicle theft, burglary and property theft regardless of the year considered property crimes are far more common than violent street crimes much to the surprise of those who are influenced by media accounts of unlawful incidents, a consistent finding is that motor vehicle theft is the least common form of property crime and property theft is the most common form of property crime in the United States. So there's not as much.
much vehicle theft. I'm guessing that's what it's saying, but the media always likes to to uh, how do you say it? spur people. I don't know what that means. No, I never. Mind. But they like to incite uh, fear and frustration into people to keep watching the news. Then we have things such as victimless crimes. These criminal offenses are thought not to involve a victim because they do not, they do not directly harm an individual other than the offender. So, uh, yeah, this, let's read the text. Commonly cited examples of victimless, victimless crimes include prostitution, drug use, and gambling. Well, some people indicate that there is no victim in these crimes, others disagree. For example, drug use may increase rates of burglary as users attempt to gain more resources to continue their habit. Prostitution may increase violence because these women and men are frequently, frequently assaulted as a result of their status. And I, it may be directly responsible for the trafficking of minors as meeting the demand of clients. Gambling may lead to financial ruin, requiring families to be supported through, gover through governmental programs. So are they really victimless crimes? If you look at them, they do cause a lot of problems. But it's mostly with people that cannot control their, their, uh, their addiction. So gamblers will, some people gamble, but they know when to stop, others don't. And those are the ones that ruin it for everyone. I don't gamble. Uh, I will lose all my money if I don't know how to gamble. Then we have things as white collar crimes. White collar crime. Sutherland described white collar crime as a crime committed by a person of respectability and high social status in the course of his occupation. So yeah, people such as Let's see what it says here. White collar crime is ill defined, but generally conceived of as lying, cheating, and stealing by occupational, corporate, and government professionals using a wide range of frauds. While there is no consensus, the following are often described as white collar crime. Bribery, securities fraud, Ponzi cracks, Ponzi schemes, I don't know what those are. Mortgage fraud, misuse of pension funds, bank fraud, unsafe products, violations of public trust, medical fraud, insider trading, crash fixing, toxic dumping, fiduciary fraud, I'm not sure what that is. Well, I don't know what that is. Religious fraud. Then, uh, oh, we still got a lot of pages to go through. Let's make it a little quicker because it's getting long. Let's see what else we have. We have, um, so it says here, white collars, white collar crimes are not victimless crime. A single fraud or scam can destroy a corporation bankrupt families through lost save, lost savings and pensions, lead to home foreclosures, introduce toxic elements in the environment, and ultimately cost investors and taxpayers billions of dollars. So they did cause a lot of trouble. Then we have cybercrime. Cybercrime, a form of illegal activity using a computer or computer networks as a primary method of commission. Examples of cybercrime include network intrusions, dissemination of computer viruses, and phishing. And that's well, phishing with P H I S I P H I S H I N G. I don't know what that is. I'm guessing that would be like phishing on the internet. You fish for uh, people. You can you can scam. And we have terrorism. The 
I completed or threatened you. I, I said that kind of excited, but I, that's bad. That's bad. Terrorism. That completed or threatened use of coercion and or violence against a population of people with the goal of changing political, religious, changing political, religious, or ideological positions. So people who try to get what they want through the use of force. Terrorism is a crime that receives a great deal of attention in the public and in academic studies. Yeah, that, that is so true. Let's see. It is committed by subnational or extremist clandestine groups that may or may not include groups in the United States. It is premeditated. Targets are non-combatants. Uh, also, they target people who cannot fight back, basically civilians. Acts have the purpose of influencing an audience through fear most of the time. You know, they try to say, if you don't do what we, do, we want, this will happen, and they blow up things. Acts tend to be cross-national, international versus domestic terrorism. Acts generally seek political, social, or economic change. So they're trying to make big changes. Then we have crime definitions change over time. Justifiable homicide. And it is right there. But let's read some ones, some that are before that, which is mala en se. And that is one of two types of illegal behavior. Mala and se refers to behavior that is sinful and inherently wrong by nature. So I'm guessing that would be such as a rape or or a kidnapping, torturing. Uh, this this refers to things that people do because they want to, be, because they choose to do it. And well. Well, yeah, stealing, you know, uh, robberies, uh, I don't know, massacres. And then we have mala prohibita, one of two types of illegal behavior. Mala prohibita describes behavior that is prohibited by law. What constitutes mala prohibita is dynamic and has changed over time. So this one, that's just things that are illegal but they are not necessarily wrong, such as, uh, such as, uh, you know, that like, like those uh, victimless crimes, prostitution and drug use and gambling, that's what it means by mala prohibita. Mm. Then we have justifiable homicide. A lawful killing of another person such as when a law enforcement officer or a citizen kills in self-defense or to defend another so that is justifiable you can do it if someone else or yourself are in danger so some people say that it's bad uh, in my opinion I think that that is reasonable especially if if it's yourself or a relative that is in danger, uh, I would I wouldn't like to be put into that position. I don't know what I would do honestly. Some people say yeah I would kill them, but you know I've never been in that situation, so I don't know if I would do it or not. Then we have something called castle Dro castle doctrine. A legal doctrine that states that homeowners are no longer required to retreat if threatened by an intruder. In some states, it's, it extends beyond homes. Oh, so this is uh, when someone goes into your house, you, it used to be that you have to get out of your house and call the police, you know, which many people didn't like that because they, the burglar probably steal what he wants and go get away by the time the police get there so now you can actually take do something for your house defend your house or he talks about on the streets in public places also if you're in danger 
you can take action to protect yourself. Then we have uh, decrimina decriminalization. The act of ending or reducing criminal penalties associated with some behaviors, mostly adultery. You hear it. I read one in here that surprised me. In Michigan, adultery is punishable with a life sentence. So that they take it really seriously over there. Then we have um, oh, here's the definition of adultery. In general, sex by a married person with someone other than his or her spouse. Specific laws differ by state as does level of criminality associated with it. So adultery is only if you're married, right? Not for a single people. Then we have the definition of uh, rape. The definition is all blurred out, but we all know what it is. Although the, here it says that they, they define they changed the definition. While rape has always been a crime and considered mala and sad, you know, ill in nature to cause harm to others, how it has been legally defined has changed. For example, originally the FBI defined rape as the sexual, as, well, as the carnal knowledge of a female forcibly and against her will. In 2011, the FBI definition was changed to broaden the behaviors that are considered rape. Now it is penetration, no matter how slight, of the vagina or anus with a body part or object or oral penetration by a sex organ of another person without the consent of the victim. This change included males as victims as well as behavior beyond the penetration of a uh, vagina by a penis. I'm in the bus, so it's kind of awkward saying this words. Anyways, uh, let's keep reading. Purpose or perspectives of the criminal justice system. Crime control perspective, a popular view of the role of the criminal justice system. This perspective states that the goal of the system is to prevent crime by shrewdly and harshly punishing offenders. So, yeah, here it says that crime control perspective finds that when punishment is weak or avoided, offenders do not fear apprehension and continue to commit crimes. So, we're going hard on criminals now to make sure they, they uh, people do not commit crimes, that they are afraid of being prosecuted. Now we have rehabili rehabilitative 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 perspective a view that the purpose of the criminal justice system is to rehabilitate rehabilitate the offender because they're trying to help offenders not not commit more crimes due process perspective 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 that views the role of the criminal justice system to be to be to ensure all people accused of crimes are treated fairly and equally in the system. So that's uh, like the inalienable rights. But this is this is a domestic thing. Which yeah, this applies to everyone, honestly. But without the inalienable rights, uh, you know the immigrants wouldn't have the due process. Now we have restorative justice perspective or restorative. Sometimes I don't know how to pronounce words. This perspective indicates that the appropriate role of the criminal justice system is to restore justice as best as possible through repairing the harm caused by criminal behavior. Wait. The restorative justice perspective finds that the appropriate role of the criminal justice system is to restore justice through repairing the harm caused by criminal behavior. 
This perspective holds that the criminal justice system should not operate through punishment, but rather through cooperating among victims, offenders, and members of the community. So they're trying to make up for the crime committed, uh, such as if you uh, break a window, you pay for it instead of just going to prison. I'm guessing that's what it means. Because now you, you can get sued for emotional emotional damage, I think they call it. So it's not just, you know, if you, if you slash someone's tires and they don't get to work and get fired, they get can get depressed, uh, probably die, lose all their things, so you get sued for all of that, not just the tire slashing. Now we have non-intervention perspective, a view that the appropriate role of the criminal justice system is to be as minimal and non-intrusive as possible. It contends that the appropriate role of the criminal justice system is to be as minimally intrusive as possible. Any intrusion by the criminal justice system is harmful because it stigmatizes an, in, an individual as an offender. Some people believe that the stigma from criminal justice system interaction results in a self-fulfilling prophecy whereby offenders view themselves as failure or delinquent and as a result find navigating the non-criminal world more and more difficult. So, so that's... Uh, they're sugarcoating the criminals, not making them feel as bad. So that way they don't they don't say, you know, screw it, I'll just do it again. So it's to prevent uh, how do you call it when they commit a crime again? I don't know but yeah to prevent to prevent them from committing more crimes. Now we have uh, something called consensus model. A consensus model which supports the idea of a social contract originated from the work of John Locke and is based on the view that everyone in the criminal justice system works in unison to achieve justice. The consensus model operates on the notion that there is general agreement about what behaviors are ha harmful to the majority of the public and that these behaviors are deemed criminal. This model recognizes that criminal law then serves a social control function designed to protect citizens and maximize peace. So, uh, where everyone agrees to achieve justice. Conflict model. A conflict model is based on the notions of division and disparity among members of society and the struggles for power that this causes. The conflict model has roots in the ideology espoused by Karl Marx and focuses on the power struggle between the haves and have-nots, or stated differently, those with and without power. According to the conflict model, those with power define what is criminal and, in doing so, exert control over the powerless. So. I'm guessing what this is saying is that some it, some people have different definitions of of what is good and what is bad. Let's see. Now we have uh, framing the packaging of criminal events in the media into tidy presentations that make sharing the information easy. Crime is portrayed in the media through framing. Framing means criminal justice and crime stories are packaged into tidy presentations that make sharing the information easy. Frames simplify criminal events and make processing, labeling, and understanding crimes easier for the audience. Oh, so they, uh, what they mean is like if you were to put it in a frame, you put it so that it's easy to understand and fast to read. Now we have faulty criminal justice system frame suggests that crime occurs because of a death of, of a dearth of law and order in the country and that criminals offend 
because they feel they can get away with it. So this means that sometimes people commit crimes because they know they can get away with it. Now we have block opportunities frame. This frame indicates that crime results from a lack of or legal options. Offenders live in poverty, are uneducated, unemployed, and discriminated against and because of that commit crime. So people who are desperate mostly, who need to maintain a family and don't have a, 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 a job or a, or a source income or a source of income. Now we have uh, the social breakdown frame. Presents crime as the obvious result of a breakdown in family and community. Alleged evidence of this collapse includes high divorce rates, cohabitation of unmarried people, out of wedlock births, same sex marriage, and other non conventional family units. This frame also contends that the availability of welfare has further enabled families and the community to disintegrate. This clear framing of the issue identifies the policies needed to correct crime, enact policies that promote family and community values, and then handouts. So those are frames that, that are caused when families break down, parents get divorced, the child feels uh, disappointed, left out, so he, he goes into the streets and hangs out with the first people that talk to them, mostly other bad people, or mostly bad people. Let's keep reading. The fourth common crime frame found in the media is the racist system frame. This perspective holds that the problem is not crime, but rather the criminal justice system. In this frame, law enforcement, courts, and corrections are depicted as racist agents of oppression. The criminal justice system then is used as a means to oppress people of color. Given this simple problem, problem the solution is clear. Enact policies that ameliorate racial injustices and include the banding together of people of color to gain the justice that they deserve. So this is saying that the media likes to to make everything racist. So if they accuse someone and he's a you know he's a non-white person, they will try to make it look up as if the law enforcement and courts and corrections are are a racist against the offender. Now we have violent media frame depicts crime as a, direct, as a direct result of the violent media that bombard us in television, movie, video games, and music. This frame holds that this constant display of violence leads to a lack of respect for human life and increased violence in the nation. To remedy this situation, the required policy is clear. Enact policies that would regular widespread violent imagery available to the masses. So they're trying to frame the Hollywood and the media, in well, not the, in the movies, video games. I think that's how they get most moms, <laughs> like a mom. I think was more mostly about that. Like, don't watch a movie, don't play those video games, don't listen to that type of music. Now we have infotainment is the marketing of a highly edited and distorted combination of entertainment and information purported to be truthful and comprehensive. Infotainment leads to the viewing public feeling that they are being educated with facts and information about crime and the criminal justice system in the United States. In reality, the public is receiving a highly edited and narrow view of the topic. These are endless examples of false information held by the public that is commonly portrayed in the media. Women are more, li are more likely to be victims of violence than men. Murder is one of the most frequent, frequent types of violence committed. Children are at higher risk of being violently victimized at school versus away from school. Most crimes committed in the United States is violent is in nature. Offenders are crazed, mon are crazed monsters. 
most violence is committed by armed offenders, strangers commit most crimes, only guilty people confess to crimes, most violent crimes result in injuries to the victims, blacks are more, are more likely to violently victimize whites than other blacks, most individuals are accused of crimes go to trial. All of these statements are false, yet most believe them to be accurate and as a result many people live in an unwarranted fear of becoming a crime victim. So, so many people have a misconception of uh, those things. Now we have a narrow casting. The presentation of a narrow view of information in the media to small homogeneous audiences. Also, this is uh, where you choose your audience. You know, you choose to show uh, a violent crime to people against violence. Uh, hmm. uh, you show images of animals being killed for their skin to humanists and then environment. Well, I don't know if I'm environmentalist, but people who who care about animals so you choose your audience to make it more to build up the, the flame you know you put the spark and once they see it a flame comes out of it now we have criminology an academic discipline that investigates the nature extent and causes of criminal offending and criminal victimization so criminology is what studies uh, crime the, the, their nature, how far it extends, and all the aspects of the crime. So we have a chapter wrap up. So the key points of this is uh, crime affects everybody either directly or indirectly. Crime is not uniformly defined and encompasses a variety of acts differs across jurisdictions involves over time given available technology and changes to reflect cultural norms and mores. The popular view of crime tends to be narrow and focus on street crimes such as robbery, rape, murder and burglary. In fact, crime is far more expansive and includes white collar crimes, cyber crimes, victimless crimes and terror terrorism. The criminal justice system is a large array of institutions with three main components law enforcement, courts, and corrections. Traditionally overlooked, the victim is an integral, integral part of the criminal justice system. The criminal justice system has expanded dramatically in the last several decades. Only recently has the growth in some areas slowed and in some cases even reversed course. Some commentators and scholars argue that the criminal justice system affects particular subpopulations more than others. There is no single criminal justice system, rather it is composed of many local, state and federal, federal systems that operate differently across jurisdictions. In addition, some people argue that the criminal justice system experience differs based on characteristics of the offender, the victim and the event. Not everyone agrees on the purpose of the criminal justice system. Some view it as a mechanism to punish offenders to, to deter them from future offending. Some view it as a way to rehabilitate offenders to be productive citizens. Others view it as a system that deals with the offender, victim, and community to make whole the damage from a crime. And finally, many feel that the system's role should be greatly reduced as it does more harm than good. Public policies established in response to crime in the criminal justice system influence every person's life. Evidence exists that policies may disproportionately affect the disadvantage to a greater degree than others. Though criminal justice and criminology are distinct disciplines, there is overlap between the two. Basically, criminal justice refers to the system of law enforcement, courts, and corrections. Investigating the practices of these, of these three institutions includes how laws relate to crime and offenders, approaches to deterring future crime. 
sanctioning and or rehabilitating offenders and recidivism. Criminology refers to the study of the nature, extent, and causes of criminal offending and criminal victimization. One can either study criminal justice without considering the role of the victim and victimization, nor study it without giving attention to the role of diversity among victims and offenders. The purpose of the media is to deliver viewers to advertisers, not necessarily to educate the public about crime and the criminal justice system. Media is more likely to come in the form of infotainment, be narrow-casted, and offer the view of a false sense of full and accurate information. So that's saying that the media, uh, they just incite, incite more uh, aggression and frustration into people. It doesn't really inform people about how the system works or, or how to solve the problems. It just shows the problems. As if I were to show you a, a crack on the road, I'm not telling you what type of concrete they used, how it was caused. Mm, I'm just showing you the crack in the road. I'm not telling you how to fix it either. No, I'm just they just show you stuff. They don't explain it or provide any solutions if there are solutions. And well, I hope you enjoyed my video and please subscribe for more. I I won't be making more because I think it you the, it's easier to remember information once you speak it and you share it with someone else. So it'll it's always helpful. Okay. Well, thank you and have a good day, everyone. Bye.